What up? End of the world time. Another tale about the demise of the Earth. Well, boy, are we in for a big surprise. In about 10 years or a little more, our climate might suddenly go totally berserk. For starters, it would turn our planet into a lifeless, super hot oven, much like the planet Venus. Welcome to the ghastly phenomenon dubbed as the runaway greenhouse effect. The really scary part is, we're heading straight for it. Phew, aren't we lucky? In the 1990s, they predicted we would get climate warming. The poles were about to melt, they said. Entire countries would get flooded. Huge hurricanes would sweep across the globe. Millions would die. Well, they had it all wrong. It's the 21st century now, and little has happened so far. But then suddenly it all changes. From one month to the next, the climate of the world goes wild. Temperatures jump. The ice caps on the poles crumble, pushing the sea levels way up. The snow caps on the mountaintops melt, turning even the tiniest rivulet into a roaring body of water. Cities are flooded. Countries washed away. Tornadoes, hurricanes push across the globe. Harvests fail. Economies crumble. Tropical diseases like malaria and denung push forwards. Forests turn into deserts, and of course, millions of people perish during all this mayhem. And if you thought that was bad, you haven't seen nothing yet. Within a few decades, the situation goes totally out of hand. Temperatures just keep on soaring, rising faster and faster. And as they do, more and more water on the earth begins to evaporate. And if you're one of those poor souls who had his country and the city flooded when the ice caps melted, you might be glad to find the seas are retreating. But don't put that flag out yet. What you're witnessing is the end of the world. Nothing more, nothing less. And here's how it goes. As the, temperature rise, as the temperatures rise, more water evaporates. But as more water evaporates, our atmosphere gets thicker and thicker, causing the temperatures to rise even more. And as the temperatures rise even more, even more water evaporates. And as even more water evaporates, you got it. There's a tra chain reaction going on here. The dreaded runaway greenhouse effect has just kicked in. Governments and scientists will desperately look for a way to turn the tide, but they won't find one. There's just no way you can stop something as mighty as the Earth's climate. Although our politicians might still mumble some reassuring words to prevent a general panic, deep within they realize how bad the situation really is. A few years more and our planet will no longer be habitable. All life is about to vanish from the planet formerly known as the Earth. There is no escape, not even a remote possibility things will improve. The best evidence is that hovering in the night sky, the planet Venus, for many years, scientists wondered why Venus has an atmosphere that's so hot that lead and tin actually melt in it. Only in the 1990s did they realize Venus has undergone the runaway greenhouse effect. Its atmosphere is so dense, incoming solar heat can't escape from it. Exactly that my friends, is what is happening to our planet. Earth is about to join Venus. We're about to literally fry to death. By now, temperatures on the Earth start getting generally uncomfortable. Everywhere you look, there's this dense, watery fog. It's water vapor, as you might guess. Where there used to be rivers, only dry gullies are left, carving through the barren landscape. And where the oceans used to be, only some lakes remain and they get smaller and saltier each day. It's hard to tell how exactly humanity will die in the end. Perhaps we won't be able to stand the heat anymore and literally find ourselves cooked to death by the ever-increasing temperatures. Perhaps we'll suffocate as our once fresh atmosphere turns into a dense brew of carbon dioxide, water vapor, and methane. Perhaps we'll survive all that, cling to our gas masks and our air conditioning, and in the end, starve to death because all plants and animals will be gone. One thing is absolutely certain, though. It will be some gruesome, hellish end. After a few de years or decades, our planet has become a deserted fog planet with an atmosphere so hot that lead and tin actually do melt in it. Life will no longer be possible, except perhaps for a handful of soil bacteria that are able to withstand the na all that nastiness. Um, the runaway greenhouse, here's the facts. Of course we know, of course we could have known that this was coming. 
Ever since the 1990s, there were some climatologists warning us about it. But their calculations were laughed away, ill understood by the general public, or ignored by the politicians in charge of things. The climatologists were dubbed pessimists, even though their computer models told everyone otherwise. As late as 2001, the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, formally warned that greenhouse effects could unleash catastrophic and irreversible changes to key planetary processes that make this world habitable. In 2005, the British Government Research Council repeated the warning and added the effect could kick in as soon as 2018. The runaway greenhouse effect works quite simple, really. First, you should realize that we have an atmosphere in the first place. That's because there's a lot of water vapor and carbon dioxide in the air. And there's nothing wrong with that. The carbon dioxide and the water vapor serve as a blanket. They prevent some of the incoming heat from the sun from frying us off and, f and us flying off into space. At least that's how things went until one day, six billion humans came around. Mankind literally pumped trillions of tons of greenhouse gases, like carbon dioxide and methane, into the atmosphere. No big deal so far. Calculations show this mass amount of extra greenhouse gas would only push up the Earth's temperature a few degrees. Besides, about one quarter all of all the methane and carbon dioxide is cleaned up by nature each year. But around 2015, that suddenly changed. The climate warning, warming could pass a critical threshold. The ice caps on the poles started to melt. This would set free billions of tons of extra carbon dioxide. The ice caps are full of tiny bubbles of trapped ancient air with a lot of carbon dioxide in them. It suddenly gives an extra hard push to the greenhouse effect. Also, the warming could unleash carbon dioxide that is trapped in sea sediments in the permafrost of Greenland, of Greenland and, uh, and its soil. And worse, the warming could set free trillions of tons of methane that are stashed away below the ocean's floor in the permafrost. And at the same time, nature could get saturated with carbon. Of course, plants and soil organisms will sp still breathe the carbon dioxide, but there'll be just way too much of it. And in the end, the water vapor kicks in. And while it gets hotter, oceans and rivers start to evaporate. This would make an atmosphere denser and hotter, pushing up the evaporation, making it hotter, and so on and so on. And then you would have it, the environmentalist nightmare. The greenhouse effect will go wild, and wilder still, until we live on a planet with an atmosphere that's so hot that lead and, that lead and tin are just melting on it. You can fill in all those words by now, right? So abandon all hope. To be honest, of all the end of the world scenarios outlined in my videos, we here find this one but with a runaway greenhouse effect particularly scary. Of course, the problem with meteors and the risks of robots taking over, but the greenhouse effect is happening today, as we speak. It seems to be only a matter of time before we can begin to melt that lead in tin. On the other hand, climate is a difficult beast. We've learned one thing over the past few decades is that no one can really predict how the climate will change on us. For example, there's a good chance the greenhouse effect unleashes not a runaway chain reaction, but an ice age, as reported in another video. Also, Earth survived intense heat before. 50 million years ago, the North Pole had no ice, but a subtropical climate. And before that, in the area of the dinosaur, CO2 levels were about four to six times higher than they are today. Back then, the sea temperature was up to 40 degrees Celsius, and many continents were flooded. It was really a greenhouse world, and it didn't, it didn't went out of hand. It didn't go out of hand. On the other hand, even if there's a remote possibility it does go out of hand, there's plenty of need to worry. We don't know about you, but we here prefer neither ice age nor super hot Venus-like atmosphere. We like things kind of the way they are. So if you hear this and you happen to be one of those top dogs in charge of things, hey, it's only one atmosphere we have here. Please try to be a little careful with it.